Good morning. Thank you for inviting me to participate in this LACNOG meeting. This is a paper we're working on jointly together with Hugo Salgado. And we wanted to speak about how we can conduct uh, testing to see how the server is working. Now, the problem is, what can I do to review my server to know whether this is working like it should? In order to do this, we generally have a test testing server that is not in production in order to then determine that both servers, both the testing and the production service are delivering similar answers. So how can we go about this in an automated way? At present, this is not so clear. So we will try to figure out a solution, an ad hoc solution for this purpose. The general idea is that we create a test uh, where we know ahead of time what uh, is the response that is being given by our current server. And we're going to have the two servers working at the same time. Our, our current production server, we can conduct the test and uh, there we're going to have a response that we'll be able to store. And that uh, uh, response that we are storing will be a reference point. It will be uh, uh, to our uh, um, uh, test server, it's like a benchmark. So we conduct uh, the new test to our test server with the software that we want to test, and we're going to get a second out. And the idea is quite simple. We have two outcomes, and we want to know whether the two of them are behaving similarly. So in order to do that, we'll see if we can, we can compare it. We uh, uh, diagram it like this. We do a diff between the two results, and we'll see uh, what the overlaps are and uh, what the differences are. And if there are any uh, differences, they may warrant uh, some action. Or if everything is exactly the same, we're going to be very happy, and we're going to feel feel more confident that our software will work the way we want it to. So we have a tool that is called DNS Comp or DNS configuration that is uh, in Python 3. And this tool is quite a simple tool. We are uh, only now beginning to use it with Hugo Salgado from Tele. Chile, and it comes with a standard set uh, of uh, behaviors of good behavior that we have uh, written previously. This test set is based on another set of tests that have been investigated in uh, different environments in the DNS world. So as we have these queries already built, then we will we'll know the expected behavior that we want to see. And these tests are quite extendable. That is, if you can write down your own test, it suffices with a, a dig command. That is a, an everyday thing for the people who work with DNS. And you can start using it right away. And they, are, they can be expanded. Each one can uh, uh, do our, your own can do your own test, or you can use ours, the ones that we develop. We are inviting more people to participate. If you want to add more tests, then the tests are going to be increasingly comprehensive. The, uh, for this tool, well, we want to integrate this in a continuous integration, continuous development, uh, uh, maybe as a unit test so that it could be used for all the QA tests that you have in your production system. Where do we take these standards tests from? First of all, we work based on a document by ICON that is more used for root servers, but uh, that uh, are also used for an authoritative uh, uh, DNS. It applies to the TLDs. And we took some of the 
uh, test in this uh, RSAC, that is document 47. And we also took a tool that had been developed by the ISC uh, uh, people uh, when they wanted to know what was happening with the DNS. So they already had a tool that, uh, although it's uh, quite uh, uh, a complete, uh, it's quite full, we, we thought it was a bit complicated to create new tests, especially if you were not too knowledgeable about uh, DNS, a, a low level DNS uh, libraries. So we think that this is a better alternative. So let's see uh, an example, a case. Let's assume that I have a, a bind version 9.11 and I want to, well, today there's a, when I uh, uh, did this uh, slide, there was a 9.12, but now there's a, a 9.16. Nine, uh, nine, I wanted to know what whether the behavior would be the same that I will have in the future. So I'm going to install the new version in a test uh, machine, and I'm going to configure it exactly with the same setup that I have in the current server, and I will create these tests, or I will uh, use uh, the ready-made. For each test that you create, you leave a dig command uh, with a comment that uh, uh, with which you can identify it. And we are going to save it with a file with a CMD extension. So each, um, each test is a file. And then we create a benchmark uh, that a point of comparison, we store it and we store it in a YAML format. And this YAML format is, is very useful because you can uh, uh, check it after saving the response. But the most important thing is that it's going to be very easy to uh, part, uh, to compare it. So how do we use this tool? Then we use this script in Python and we pass the file with the response by the production server and we complement it with the command that we want to test with. So it's quite simple. So for instance, what would a test file be like? For instance, it would carry a, a comment as you see there. There we say that we are going to conduct a test on the SOA uh, register uh, with a start of authority. And then we're going to get an IPv4 uh, uh, answer through UDP a query would be sort of what you have there, but be careful because in order for you to see it well, well there uh, maybe it has some hops. Uh, um, um, maybe you would have to uh, um, uh, put it in just one line. It, it, it's, it didn't fit there, but you write it in just one line. And the answer will be in YAML, and it would have a similar format to this. Here we have a message type answer. We have a set of parameters. For instance, the, the answer came from a server with that IP number through which port. And we can see, for instance, there in yellow, blue, and uh, fuchsia, we can see the number of answers and how many authority answers, uh, how many, um, and how many additionals. And then we have, for instance, some things such as the format of EDNS that was used, the size of the packet, whether there were any cookies in the end. Finally, we store, we save all the answers of the command that we had used initially. And then on the second page, you have the answers that we mentioned in the previous slide. For instance, we have two registries for the answers uh, section. In the end, it's this would be the most important part that uh, this, concept, uh, this query would solve. Then we have 
other answers that are additional for the authority or the additional section. And each of those lines fits with the numbers that I showed in the previous slide. So, for instance, some tests that we have created. For instance, how can we find positive responses where the query name equals a query, a specific query. Query type may be, for instance, a DS uh, registry, or it may, there, there may, there, when, when we have that type of a query, we expect uh, the status of the response to come with the authority bit uh, on, and that the answer section contains the uh, 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 RR set uh, signed for the query name or the authority section uh, to be empty and the additional section to be empty too. So this could be intuitive for, uh, based on what we know, but it's just an example. This would be more or less an exit example uh, how, when uh, after running all the tests, and if we want to see what's happening with a, with an answer that was incorrect, you're going to see all those messages that locate the change. Here we see, for instance, that there's a response that in one server we had activated minimal responses and the other one we hadn't. And there you, you can choose whether to use that. The current status of this service is in that link in GitHub where you can see the tests available today. The future steps are how to add new tests, how to further improve documentation, and also to say, for instance, what types of errors we see. And well, if you have any ideas, you can send issues to the GitHub and you can contribute to the same software. So thank you. And if you have any questions, I'll be very happy to answer. Thank you, Mauricio. Unfortunately, we ran out of time for questions, but still people can write them down in the Q&A or send you an email. Yes, and I invite you to send questions in the DNS working group in Spanish in LACNIC. We are always in touch with Uruguay. Thank you. Maka?